following podcast has been brought to you by the Ramble Mania Show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Ramble Mania Show probably brings to you in his odd, your inaugural Ramble Mania Heavyweight Champion. Four-time Ramble Mania heavyweight champion. I still don't even know if I'm the longest reigning Ramble Mania champion, but former and inaugural uh, Ramble Mania tag team champion, Hazel the Ice, join along with me as always. It's your boy, Jay Savage. What have the Ramble Mania tag team champion, sadly, but we will get them back. That's a fact. That is a fact. We will get them back. In two weeks' time. At double or nothing. Two weeks. Welcome to another. We are Twin Magic, and welcome to another edition of Raw Rants, where we give you the good and bad and who booked this shit on Monday Night Raw. Nah, I'm not doing it to this. Bar. What do you think? I'm, I know I'm crazy, but you think I'm mad crazy? Get the fuck out of here. I'm about to say, I'm the, about other to one, the other one is just is is on a break for now. I had to like literally organize this whole fucking room again just to make it look as decent as you saw last time. The no more TV box here. That shit is a television stand now, so I yeah. can perfectly see the TV instead of having to go like this or this. Hit Hazel a desktop. Come on, people. No, I'm perfectly... Nigga, a desktop? You're talking about I need a monitor and a fucking big-ass hard drive? No, I'm fine. You're talking about I need an actual desk. I'm That's good. Me. <laughs> All I need is a small uh, coffee table or TV table for this television and to put my system there with so that, you know, it doesn't take up any space. Mm-hmm. Like, what? once this office is, like fully done it's halfway done half of the shit here is done but most of it is not finished yet so once that shit gets all once that shit gets like completely done i, I it'll like it'll look good you probably might see a, a closet just in the room but sorry yeah. uh yeah and you know what what a weird uh monday this wasn't even weird what am i talking about this was just I can honestly say I wasn't really digging this show this week. Really wasn't. No, no, nothing, no. nothing really of interest. I mean, maybe two interesting things happened here on Monday Night Raw. But yeah, um, what we got here was basically an actual representation of what should have been redacted backlash. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty fucking much. It's just, and when you like, you'll see how I get when when we talk about them. It's it's just ridiculous. There was only like one original match that happened on this whole show, which I'm like, oh, okay, hey, you, you gave us something good, and it's the first time ever. But then everything else is like, did we really ask for this? Do we want to see this again? Yeah. But we do have some, before we get to Raw. We have some news to talk about. Um, you wanted to talk about how Eddie Edwards made is coming out of retirement. Well, no, no, Davy Richards is coming out of retirement. Yeah, my boy Davy Richards, y'all. Um, so MOW is having a thing where they're having like a draft, so they're drafting people. Um, yeah, so it was just announced today, I believe earlier. Well, no, earlier, right? Yeah. But David Richards is now signed. He's going to make his debut back in, back in professional wrestling at MLW July 10th. I think that's pretty fucking awesome. I, I always thought he was, he, was, he was great in the ring. I was always asking, I was always asking what happened to him. I didn't know what happened to him. Yeah, I didn't know what happened to him either. I think, um, I do believe that he might have retired throughout like the end of TNA during, when it was like the start of um, Impact or GFW at the time. I, but I do know he retired uh, maybe within four or five years ago. Yeah, so now he's making his debut, and his debut, he, he's making a comeback, and his comeback is at MLW July 10th. Well, he's making his in-ring return, but he's making his in-ring debut at a new promotion is what you're saying. 
bigger news that took place, I mean, well, before that, the other big news is the Velveteen Dream has been released by WWE. <laughs> oh, not the dream. The dream. No! In other wrestling news, AEW is starting a new show called Rampage, which will be on TBS along with Dynamite, and it will all start next year. No, Rampage is going to be on TNT. Dynamite is going to TBS. Well, whatever. They're, they're every everything's just getting switched up in AEW nowadays, and it's just, uh, it's it's. It, Randy Orton said it best. It's stupid, stupid, stupid. Like, let me get this straight. You signed a multi-year deal with TNT. I don't give a shit if it's NBA, NHL. I don't care. You signed a fucking deal with the multi-years for you to go to the sister channel. So Dynamite is the new Thunder? I guess. Maybe. And you're going to give us this one-hour show of AEW, of, wait, Midway Presents, AEW Rampage. Come watch AEW wrestlers be kaiju wrestlers and destroy buildings. Fucking shit. For an hour. What is this, WWE CW? Maybe. Oh, no. Oh. Like, how Fuck many show, How many shows, hold on, I'm sorry. How many shows does AEW need to get... Uh, their talent over the guys that they don't even that had, that they never even signed over. You have dark, you have elevation. What more do you need? What's next? AEW sweaty, AEW heat, AEW velocity. What, what, what do you, what? This is the problem that I'm having with AEW. They're doing shit too quick, they're doing shit way too quick, and you should be taking the time. You should be taking the time to work with what you have now before you start pushing on to other projects. I agree. You can agree, get people buddy. over on mm-hmm. the two YouTube shows that you have. What may, What is going to... What's going to make your company better? By adding more shows? I don't think so. Like, who are you trying... What are you trying to get over now? Who? Unless you're trying to do something for the women in general, if you're going to do a show for the women, fine. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with it. Hey, start a women's tournament. Do what you, you know. Do what you did last time. You did. You gave us a show on YouTube based on the women's tournament. Why don't you do more of that instead of giving us more shows? How about do a tournament for the TNT title before it transforms into the TBS championship? <laughs> You know, do stuff like that. AEW doesn't really need more new shows. And people are just so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to leave. No, shut up. Wrestling is wrestling, but this is too much. This is way too much. But I'm happy that AEW is actually doing some changes. But they need to stop doing all of this. Yeah, You're doing way too much. Way too much. Stick with what you have now, and then wait five years for you to do all this other crap. The uh, the the new show, okay, great. You want to do it an hour? Great. Gives everyone less things to talk about. Maybe less things for you and I to talk about, since the <laughs> other guys want to do AEW. All right. I mean, and, I mean, go ahead. Say what you, say what you guys say. I, I love AEW. I would love to do AEW. You don't want to do AEW? No, I don't mind doing AEW. At least it'll be better than you know the, the shit that we talk about every week here. Besides yeah. SmackDown, because SmackDown's great. I'm right. talking about the, right there, the this, this, this red brand, this 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 red brand that they that they want to fucking do here. Three hours. Oh God, no. <laughs> In other news, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Will Osprey had to relinquish the championship because he broke his neck. On the second night, well, yes, his neck is officially injured. It happened on the second night of wrestling Dantaku when he went one on one with Takagi Shingo. My son is a beast. You see, that way you don't fight him, bro. No, did you like? Why would you fight him? I mean, 
And ask it, why would you fight anyone in Japan when most likely they'll either concuss you or manslaughter you? <laughs> I'll take the concuss. Not murder, just manslaughter. It, it, was, it was all accidental. He died in the ring. <laughs> it's not murder. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing my job. <laughs> yeah, we did our job. That's it. You know, <laughs> we can all go home, right? Fuck it. Look, um, mm. Will Ospreay was having an amazing, well, I mean, it was probably, he only had the belt for like a month and a half. So I wouldn't really say an amazing run, but he his run was actually starting to get good. And man, when... When it had some, I mean, I, I saw this match, and this match is great. And, you know, Will Ospreay kept fighting. That's one thing about Japan that I respect. Like, even if you're injured, you're going to still keep going. Like, yeah, WWE guys do it. AEW guys do it. But they're not as tough as the New Japan guys. Do you remember Hiromu Takahashi facing Dragon Lee? He did that crazy suplex in America, and literally Hiromu spiked his fucking head and yeah. slid. And he finished the match. He finished it without yeah. even putting up the X. Well, I was showing. Oh shit, New Jack stuff. I'm doing New Jack stuff. Let me stop. I was I was showing my kids like at work. Well, oh my god, bro, that they were like what? Like I like I was showing them like 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 crazy moments like in New Japan like they, that in matches. Like I showed them the part where where um Cody Bushi did the did the um. What was it? I think it was like a hurry. He was trying to, he was trying to do like a hurry Karana. And then he flipped Will Ospreay from the top ropes and then Will Ospreay landed on his feet. They were like, they were like, whoa. They were like, what? Yeah, that's not real. I was like, if that's not real, then what is that? Right. You should show your, your your school kids yeah. the spot where I think it's I think it's Will Ospreay and Marty Scroll. And they do that Spanish fly spot off the apron, and Will Ospreay actually hits his head on the apron. Oh, I said hurt like hell, and it was so scary to see that. Like my kids at work, like they they love they be into wrestling because they see me watching it. Like they see me watching like the the matches and say, "Oh, Mister J, who's that? Oh, what? Oh, where they from?" Like they be asking questions. So you know, look at you being all match striker to the kids and shit. Just be happy you're not lying to the principal saying. I got to miss work because I got to do shows. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing the work tonight. I'm working over the boys. <laughs> so, um, so who do you think is next in line now that Will Ospreay is going to have to vacate the title? And I do believe he has to vacate the Rep Pro British Undisputed Heavyweight title since I did hear he is going back to the UK to be medically treated. Mm -hmm. So who do you go for, uh, Okada or Shingo to, to become the next champion? I pick I pick Shingo. I mean, I, I like Okada, and you know Okada could do good things with the belt as well. But you know he already he already had his time his time and his shine with that belt. You know I feel like it's Shingo time. I'm, he he's been. Like since since he debuted, like he's been like kicking ass, you know, and not taking a lot of L's either. So I'm really he should be the next one for me. I'll say the same thing. Let's have Shingo win the belt against Okada, but let's also get Switchblade to win the G. I know I said Coda to win the G1, but then I realized he wins it three times in a row. That would look horrible. I think. I think he would get the Roman Reigns hate if they did that. So yeah, let's ha let's give Jay White the G1 win. I'm going the main event. He doesn't have to win against Shingo. He could just main event Wrestle Kingdom and just let Shingo go on this like complete reign of like of the dragon of the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, mm -hmm. let's have that. Like yeah, there there are a lot of people online that do want it. Like I don't want to. It's not that I don't want Okada winning it. It's just you had your time. Move the fuck on. It's time for other people to come in and take the spotlight that you took over for two years. Okay. I don't mind you winning championships, but as long as it's not this belt and you don't hold on to it for too long, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Tanahashi's a prime example of he should be nowhere near that belt. He's at. He's already hit his stride. 
and he's almost I feel like he's on the verge of retirement. I feel like after you know this whole thing with the never open weight, I hopefully this Wrestle Kingdom that he wrestles in will be his last one. Like I'm not saying this should be his last one, but they're te- they're trying to make it seem like oh this is his last run because you know he can't hang anymore. He's getting old. He's getting weak. He's getting fragile. He can't my, keep up with the young guys. Look, his body look amazing though. Yeah, that too. Like you have an amazing fati- uh, figure, but at the same time, you know, can you keep up with the young guys? You gotta ask yourself that because not everyone can wrestle at fifty and still have like a twenty-nine year old's like stamina. It's not possible. It's not mm-hmm. fucking possible at all. That's damn man. It's right. like, I know he loved the business a lot, man. Submitted to the approval of the Ramble Mania show. This is the tale of Redacted Backlash, night two. Oh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> so we open up Monday Night Raw. Bobby Lashley is the godfather, and he got the hose on his train. The hose. Lashley, being Lashley, Shows off his knuckle, his so-called injured knuckle. MVP is like trying to sell this knuckle. Like, you see this hand? This hand went through so many faces. You can see the scars. You can see the blood. I'm like, bro, your hand is fine. Your hand is perfectly fine. Why did you do that? You didn't need to do that. So Bobby Lashley was supposed to have the night off. That's why he has those only fan girls that he wanted to achieve his sexual fantasies. And You know, his wife just said, no, you got to wrestle. And Bobby Lashley just obliged his wife and said, nah, I'm a fighting champion. I'm a real fighting champion. I don't need these hoes. I'm making open challenge. Boom. Drew McIntyre just shows up out of nowhere, just snatches the mic out of MVP. I accept the challenge. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Drew. Wait a minute. You want to be all rude and disrespectful and shit. Like, bro, you didn't even get to hear everything I was going to say. <laughs> Everyone in the W in the Raw roster is entitled to this open challenge, except for Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. So, you, you know, he he gets he gets mad about that and all this other shit. MVP says something to uh to end it off. Lashley goes for a punch. Drew ducks. Drew. Punches Lashley, Lashley rolls right out of the ring. And as he's rolling out of the ring, you can literally hear these OnlyFans girls just yelling in the fucking background. I'm like, you're walking down the stairs casually like a normal human being. Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? And they don't even show them just yelling. But you could clearly see like there's one of the girls having a normal face and all that stuff. They're, I think they're just doing this. Ah! Ah! Like, that's what they were doing. <laughs> that's what they were fucking doing. So, yeah, that's basically how the segment ends. I mean, what, what, what did you think of this? Thank you, fuck. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really care about it. I just want I want them to move on, man. I, I just... I, for, I, I mean, look, for every fucking storyline that they have right now, these people need to move on because they've been at it already. Exception for the Rhea Ripley and... and and Charlotte, you know. Oh no, we need to move on from that too. There's a lot of things here that we need to move on from. I mean, but Charlotte just came back. No, it doesn't matter if she came back. They wrestled last year. And they want to do this rivalry. No, we gotta move on. Who would you everything? Who would you want to who would you want to face Vera Ripley? I let we move on. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. We'll talk Look, about it. All right, so we open up the show with our very first match, AJ Styles going one-on-one with Elias. No tomatoes, no song, no Oma squeezing tomatoes, thinking that he's going to do the great Kali vice grip shit as his finisher. Yo, he should do that. <laughs> he, Yo, should, he should, he should have the vice grip. That'd be a cool move for him to have. I ain't going to lie. All right. Our very this our very first rematch of the night. All right, <laughs> ramble on, twin. 
right. So for what I can, for what I saw, this match was a good back and forth, man. With you, honestly, like Elias is not whack, man. Elias's work in the ring is actually really good. It's not bad at all. So to see him, to see him like go against somebody that is literally one Phenomenal. of the greatest, you know, to see him like really hold his own in there with the phenomenal one, with one of the greatest professional wrestlers in the world, it was actually a real good match. Like I, I think was, I don't feel like there was any bad things about this match. The match was good. I'm trying to see who won, I believe. Uh, AJ won via DQ with Riker actually throwing him to the guardrail. Yeah. Or barricade, whatever the fuck your interpretation is. Now, now I was a little, I was a little confused because like, you know, Omos, like, I, like, I got, he should start walking. Like, I feel like he should start running after people and like beating their ass. Okay. Like they over here whooping AJ's ass. Okay. All right. But here's one thing you got to learn. Giants can't run. They have to walk methodically slow to look as menacing as possible. How do you think Giant Gonzalez got fucking over? That's true, but yo, your, your boy's getting his ass whooped, though, bro. Like, it doesn't matter. It's all Vince sees it. He never, he, that, I mean, you could count the big show as, you don't even count the big show as running because his running is like jogging or a power walk, okay? <laughs> so, nah, but, go ahead. Trust me, it's, it's like, it's impossible to have like tall giants, you know, actually running after their uh their their fucking proteges or their managers or their fucking partners and shit. Yeah, I agree. So like the but the match itself, man, the match was, was good. Like the match was good. Yes, it was a rematch. We already saw this, but honestly, they did a, they did good work inside the ring, man. It was a it, it was it was a it was a good start, even though it was a rematch uh i mean yes it was a rematch it was an okay match i mean i'm not gonna say it was great Mm -hmm. again this is just one out of six matches that are just full of rematches and it just it just goes on and on and on and on and on and it's gonna continue until the main event because the main event is the only different thing that happened on raw so i mean i don't mind aj styles you know getting a dq win. did he shave his goatee Mm-hmm. Like oh, so now he's just now he's just clean, AJ. Wait, no, hold up, no, no, he has. Hold on, hold on, sorry, no, 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 no. Okay, so he he shaved the connection, like the connection. I he had, shaved the beard. So he only no, no. So he yeah. So he only has this right here. He only has this, and it's very light though. It's very very light. But yeah, he only he only has this right here. He doesn't have the connection anymore. Well, I mean, hopefully this is something that we can move on from because I'm sick and tired. Like, uh, I'm sick and tired of Elias and AJ wrestling. It's like every three weeks we have to see them wrestle. And it's like, I'm getting so bored with this shit. It's time for us to move on to something new. Brutal is pacing back and forth. The new day shows up. Hey, you got my pigeon mail. She's like my pigeon vest is fucking cool. And it's just like the new day, new day are just like, where's the snake? You say you had a snake for a seat. Where's the snake? Where is it? Where is the snake? The snake shows up. All right, I'm here for Adam Pierce. Where's Adam Pierce? Brutal's like, look, guys, I lied to you guys because I wanted you guys to come together because friendship. Friendship? Friendship again? No. <laughs> what is this? Some Yu-Gi-Oh! Heart of the Cards like fucking segment or something? Because because the, the value of friendship is more important than us being enemies right now. It's basically what Matt Riddle is trying to implicate. So you know, and the only way that you know they could you know get back to their good graces is that Randy Orton apologizes to the New Day, and. You know, Matt Riddle being Matt Riddle. You know, if you apologize, it'd be different. Like, one time I saw this whale in an aquarium, and I apologized for setting it free. I'm just like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? And it's just like, you know, Randy Orton is not going to say sorry to the New Day. Kofi Kingston, you know, coming up with the stupidest dick joke ever. Instead of saying, 
erectile dysfunction. He says, reptile dysfunction. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You're stupid. And then Randy Orton says, because he's not sorry for what he did to the New Day and all that other stuff. And Kofi Kingston, again, with stupid shit. Like, even if he did say sorry, we were not going to accept it. <laughs> so... The, they 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 make a match between these two fucks. So there we go, more rematches. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and Matt Rule's like, bro, what are you doing, man? Like, we just wanted some friends. I wanted friends. Don't you want friends? We need friends. We gotta have friends. We need friends. And so- <laughs> Nick was disappointed. He just stood there disappointed. Yeah. What you think? Poor, poor riddle. <laughs> All he's trying to do is make a four-man stable. That's all he wants to do. Yeah, he's trying to make his party of two to a party of four. That's all he wants to do, Randy. Why you gotta be such a such a, such an angry guy, huh? Why you gotta be such an angry viper, huh? Why you why why you gonna keep people head off, huh? Because that's, gonna... that's what Randy finds funny. What he finds why? setting people houses on fire funny? He finds <laughs> kissing Stephanie on the lips while Triple H watching with handcuffs on funny. He finds. Calling Kofi Kingston stupid funny over and over and over and over. And you know mm-hmm. what? He just likes RKOing the fuck out of nowhere funny. So yeah, I enjoy I enjoy this segment. It's cool, but we I feel that we all know that eventually it's coming where Randy is gonna turn on Riddle because you know it's like yo, I try to deal with him, I can't. <laughs> that that's it. You get rid you get rid of Orton for a few. A few matches, of you know, a few matches, and then that's it. Then it's over. Right. But yeah, um, no, this segment. Too. I mean, it was it was an okay segment. I mean, it's always funny for Matt Riddle to do some, say some pothead shit that you know that has to sound very subtle and PG because they don't want to get too subtle with it. <laughs> we now have Alexa's playground, and our special guests are the new women's tag team champions. The Samoan Hearts, Natty and Tamina. And Natty is just trying to play it cool, trying to be the the, the responsible adult. Tamina is like, what the fuck am I doing here? I am going to murder this little girl on the swing, holding on to another little girl in her hands. All right. So she wants to leave the playground because she's creeped out by all of the surroundings that it, that she's standing on, like, how, how are you afraid of a bunch of LED screens that says Alexa's Playground? Like, there's nothing ominous and creepy about that. If you were in the Firefly Funhouse, then you could be having that reaction of you looking around like, <laughs> did Jigsaw put me into this? Am I, am I in an escape room? What's going on here? All right, so, you know, she wants to leave the playground and, you know, Natty's trying to calm her down, like, stay here, stay here. And Alexa's is like, no, don't leave. Don't leave. You can't leave. Lily, want, Lily had a had chance to ask guys the hard questions. What's your favorite color? What? <laughs> Natty, oh, my favorite color is pink, like my wife. Tamina, it's black and blue, which is what I'm going to give to you if you want to keep putting this shit through me. I'll give you these hands, girl. Oh, my God. And throughout that time that, like, you know, Tamina is, like, trying to be all tough and intimidating, Alexa Bliss is no-selling this shit, just laughing, like, "Ah, ah, 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 ah." hey, do you guys like flies? Lily likes flies, especially when they're like, and then she looks at them, and it's like, there's all the guts and all that stuff and the teeth and the the wings, and when she pulls the wings, it's just, it's so fun. She collects wings, and, hey, where'd you guys go? We were talking about flies and wings. Chicken wings? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was, yeah, rumble on in the segment. I, honestly, I, I enjoyed the segment. Um, it's, <coughs> let me say this, it's finally, it's good to finally, um, see Tamina with some, with some, with some gold, you know, around her body. <laughs> and, and, and as well for Natty. Natty hasn't had a title in a while, but Tamita has never had a title. So this was definitely, it was good to see. I I I I I love the fact that Tamina 
Tamina was the 24-7 champion, but Pepperidge Farm doesn't want you to remember that. Yeah, yo, oh, shit, I forgot about Well, the, well, yeah, <laughs> but um, um, honestly, like, I really enjoyed it because just like, just like how you, how you said, like, you had Natty Day just trying to keep it cool, you know, just trying to like get it, get, get the, get, get the show, get the questions over with, you know, and and just want to dip to me. No, in the other hand, it's like, bro, like, what the fuck, like, like, yo, if you try some shit, I'm fucking you up. Like, what? what do you mean to me? Don't want a green belt. What do you mean to me? Don't want a green belt. What are you talking about? That never happened. It never happened. They hit you with the neuralizer and they tell you, Tamina never won that championship. You want to know who won it? Kung Fu Knock. So, <laughs> we have a one-on-one -on -one match taking place, another fucking rematch. This time, it's Angel Garza going one-on-one -on -one with Drew Gulak. And guess what? They don't have jobber entrances. They actually come out to their entrances. Mm -hmm. When's the last time Drew Gulak ever came out to his entrance on live television? I don't it's know. It's been a while. I don't know. But, um, yeah, this Since is just... the last time he teamed up with Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah, that too. Rambo on this match. Okay, so... I, I like Andrew Garza. i am be honest. Like, I, I, I'm a big fan of Drew Gulak. I don't like tights Drew Gulak. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know. Like, him with tights, I'm not... I don't know. I don't. I don't like it. I like when he just come out like his other shit with the, with the the robe, the robe. You know the the underwear and you know. But I don't know. I I've. I don't know. It's something about that. It's something about the tie. I'm just not digging. But you sure? Um, you sure? It's the other hand. Are you sure it's the tights? Because I think you might you might just not like the color orange on him. Maybe is that too honesty? Maybe maybe the orange is just too bright for me. Like, <coughs> um, but but he's a, like other than his attire, honestly, like he he is a he can perform very well in the ring, and Angel Garza as well. Like he he, he does good. I don't know, but I, I I feel like I feel like with him, he still needs to do a little bit, like do a little more practice. He be fucking up like a little bit. But honestly, but th this match, it was good. It's this is the second time they fought. It has a storyline. It has a storyline. Well, 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 okay. It's not a major storyline. It, it's what you would call a minor storyline. Like, it's just a little something where you know that real soon, Adrian Garza is going to be done with Drew Gulak. And then he's going to move on to something else. I just call it softcore porn if Angel Garza needs to be yeah. sticking roses in someone's orifices or oral area. Yeah, he put one in the ass and one in the mouth. Yeah, and if you and like, if you see, if you go on their fucking social media page, you can clearly see Drew Gulag walking into the back and you know all that other stuff. And here's fucking Angel Garza. Not only does he pat him on the back, but he like stiff him. He stiffs him with a palm strike to the back, and the fucking rose pellets like cough out of his mouth. Like he's just like like he just puked them out and shit. So yeah, really? basically. Sorry. Basically, the fucking... I don't give a fuck. Wind Clipper, the match ended. And then he shoved the he shoved rose pellets down his mouth. But it looked like he was, like, trying... It looked like he was trying to do more, like, shove his fist down his mouth, too. I'm like, okay! <laughs> this is getting too porn hubby right now. You about, you about to get rated hard. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm glad you ripped off your pantalones before the match, because I didn't want you doing that during the match. It's just annoying as fuck. But God damn. Now you don't like that part, but you don't like when he goes and he throws it at them. <laughs> I mean, when, when you do it before the match for like a for like an advantage, because you're the fucking heel. Yeah, you gotta do that. But now is not the time for you to be ripping off your fucking patalones during a fucking match, especially when there's no fucking live crowd. <laughs> How stupid yeah. is that? Damn it, rompe la patalones. Ah! Why are you la gente, coño? This is, I'll say this about Angel Garza, man. If WWE plays it right, which it looks like they, they don't play anything right, unless your name is Roman Reigns and the Almighty, just a little bit for the Almighty. People. They 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 was about they were, they were fucking him up a little bit, but What's not Seth they, Rollins. Yeah. Oh or yeah. Oh, Brian. <laughs> so, you know, honestly, I, I he had a problem. He 
he he does okay on the on, on the on the mic one like when he talks his wrestling is good so we just gotta see but honestly i think after maybe i want to say like maybe one more or two more matches he should be done with um with gulak and move on to somebody else i mean you know what this is better than them being on main event there you go. Cause um <coughs> once we get to the once we get to the US championship, I'll explain what happened there later. All right, so wait, 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 are we done? Yeah, we're are done. We done? I, I didn't care for this match. Oh no, 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 no. That that that's cool because your favorite segment is coming up. I I didn't think the return of our truth was my favorite segment. I said this oh, was no. the most original Actually, segment. After, after that. I, we're not doing, we're not giving Eva Marie two time segments on the show. The the chick, the, the thing doesn't deserve it. That freaking <laughs> Leviathan doesn't deserve shit, let alone my fucking. <laughs> A Wild Art Truth returns with the 24 7 championship. And we was just talking about that, literally. That motherfucker pretending he's blind. Like, bro. Your, your fucking partner is next to you. You got to do a show later on at 11.05. So stop playing games with us. So then he, th- he hears that, like, there's a there's an open challenge going out to the 24-7 title. You're the 24-7 champion. That's just being defended 24- 24-7. There's no open challenge. Yeah. Everyone's walking to get it. So no he confuses it for, the, for Bobby Lashley's uh, almighty open challenge. Fucking Tozawa is just sneaking up on the stairs like some Japanese horror movie, like The Ring and shit. He's doing like all this shit to the stairs. I'm like, damn, bro. You could be in movies. You could be in horror movies. <laughs> you, you can have a better career than this. Either that or you can just go back to Japan and wrestle in Japan because your career, I don't like what they're doing with you here. Mm-hmm. He you looks know, like I- a... Everybody in the Kuzu that was in the Kuzu with Classic, man. Is now in the 24-7 division. Mm-hmm. Except for Tony Nese and Arya Davari, who are safe and are just in NXT or in 205 Live Wrestling every week. They just got beat up by a tag team for a whole world. Uh, so, yeah, Kira Tozawa is 24-7 champion again. And, you know, our truth is, is getting... Uh, the how the tables have turned confused, turn tables, table turns, turn tables, turn, turn, table turns. Resident Evil Day is the shit, though. <laughs> I will admit that. <laughs> okay, so uh, you ready for some more rematches? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have stoop, 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 Randy Orton taking on fucking stoop, 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 and Kofi Kingston. Go ahead, ramble on in this match. These guys got history, man. Stupid, got, stupid, stupid history. They got they got some crazy history, man. Like other than that, that that the you know that stupid thing. <coughs> these guys, these guys do have a lot, very long history, man. Ran, I think Randy Orton shut like tried to shut down his one of his. I guess WWE was trying to like push him, and I guess like he, Randy yeah, was, he 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 shut that shit down immediately. Yeah, so you know they definitely have history there. So them performing together, they got chemistry. It was gonna be good. It was gonna it, it was gonna be good. It was good. Um, and yeah, Kofi definitely Kofi got the win. No, 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 lie, lie, lie. Didn't he lose? Kofi, um, Kofi, Kofi won the main event. No, Kofi won via roll up. In this match. Kofi wins both of his matches via roll up. No way. Yes. Um, a ro- Damn. What's a Kofi won with the greatest move of professional wrestling? Yep. The roll up? Oh, oh, I see it. Oh, I see it. I see it already. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, yo, you see Randy? Ah, oh, but if you watch the video, right? Right when Randy gets pinned and he's about to get up, he goes, stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's like at that very moment, like he re- at that very moment that Randy realizes that the three count has already been said and the bell rung and Kofi got out of that ring, he was telling himself, stop, 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 stop it. Yeah. At the referee. Like that right there deserves a $50,000 fine for you fucking, like if you really yell at the referee and just push him like, how stupid can you be? 
You stupid moron. You're stupid, stupid, stupid. How can you count to three? You stupid rap. You're so stupid, stupid, stupid. All right, I'm getting tired of saying that shit. But basically, that's what the match was in general. It was... I think Randy should just say it best. Because literally, at the very end of it, now... Riddle is trying to get in, uh, like, you know, break up the whole thing between the New Day and Randy Orton. Uh, I think Xavier shows Riddle, and then Riddle shows Xavier, and Xavier takes a bump, and then, you know, that's how friendships end now. Friendships don't end with a game of Mario Party. They end with a shove. Riddle is here now. Yeah, they end with a shove. They, you, you know... Friendships don't end when you play WCW versus NWO Revenge or World Tour. They end when you push people. When you push them, and the first person that hits the floor is the one that ends the friendship. So we have uh, we have like two dumb tag teams. Well, I, I can't really call them dumb. We have one tag team that's hot and another tag team that's dumb. Basically, Lana and Naomi are dumb. Dana and... and are the hot ones because they're really fucking hot. So they're complaining about how, oh, why are these two stupid women, Nia and Shayna, getting a rematch for the for the women's tag team championship? And why is it that every time we get women's tag team championship matches, we get fuck boy finishes and all that dumb shit? Blah blah blah. And Charlotte comes up like, ladies, ladies, you all blew your chance. And, you know, Dana, being the smart ass that she is, she's like, like you? Because Charlotte lost to Asuka last week. <laughs> and Charlotte's like, what'd you say, bitch? And Dana's like, nothing, 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 bitch. I'm cool. I'm cool. Hey, she ain't lying. <laughs> she's, no, but she's not lying, though. No. She's really not. So she keeps not all these lost. bitches out. And she's like, I need privacy with, with, with Adam Pierce and, and Sonya Deville. Basically... The privacy conversation is, you know, if you if you say you're gonna have this conversation in private, My literally choice. mean it because the cameraman is still there. There's no privacy going on. You just kicked out four women. You know what that calls that? Charlotte burying women. <laughs> Pretty much. Charlotte, so Charlotte complains so that she get what she wants. So yes, if we when we saw redacted backlash, we saw the triple threat, we saw that Rhea Ripley did the rip tied on to Asuka and Asuka eating the pin, meaning Charlotte did not lose the match technically. So Tech. now she she's basically put trying to put herself in this position where it's like, I did not lose. So I should be the number one contender for Rhea Ripley for the Raw Women's Championship. And then you know, more rematches. Oh, if you beat Asuka tonight in a one-on-one match, we'll, we'll take it into consideration. Rhea Ripley shows up and, you know, she says her stuff is like, I want real challenges because Charlotte, you're yesterday's news. She is. <laughs> she's, she's last year's news. I'm, I mean, Charlotte is, isn't really technically yesterday's news because you want to know who's yesterday's news? Ronda Rousey. Shayna Baszler's yesterday's news now because she just lost the women's tag team belts. Um, the Iconics were yesterday's news. Mickey James were yesterday's news because they were fucking released. Just for you, just for us to have this fucking thing make her fucking return. Whatever. Whatever. All we know is that the match is going to take place later on tonight. More stupid rematches. More stupid bullshit with now the women's tag team championships. We have the Samoan Hearts taking on Nia and Shayna Baszler in a rematch. God, this is this is the fourth rematch Yeesh. in a row. Ramble on. This match I'm looking at like the highlights, like clips of it right now. And honestly, it's like, it feels like the match was just everywhere. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know. I feel, I feel like when anybody goes against Naya, like Naya doesn't, she doesn't sell, man. 
I feel like she. Uh, I feel like she just be wilding, man. Like I, I, I like her, but I just feel like she, she to be wilding sometimes, man. Um, I, I, I will mention that I believe it. I want to say it was like a little bit in the beginning, like towards the beginning of the match. Um, Alexa Bliss came out. Well, she didn't come out. It was like towards the end of the match where you see Reginald just like on one, one of the one of the stair steps, going up, trying to go up another flight. Boom! Kane Pyro appears. Almost supposedly, it hit it hit Reginald so hard in the face that he literally flew into the barricade, like holding on yeah. to his face. Mind you, this was the only guy that actually sold throughout this whole fucking thing. The fire didn't even touch you. You were nowhere near it. How could? How dare you try to sell us that crap? Hey, 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 hey! Listen, but listen, he sold that shit. He kept, he kept doing that shit. Bro, you just did an Eddie Kingston at AEW Revolution. <laughs> no. Listen, no, listen. You leave Eddie Kingston alone. He was trying to save his friend. Okay, <laughs> just like how fucking Reginald was trying to do flips and save his fucking girlfriend. Fire did not even touch him. It did not touch him. It didn't. <laughs> if it did, trust me, yeah. It, if it did, It yo. really did. It really did not. You can, no, you can no, see that. it. They show replays of it. He was on the second steel step. He was nowhere near. And dude, he's fucking short. Yo, how, let's how, let's like, be honest, bro. How close do you want him to fucking be, bro? That's all it's like, not like how close I want him to be. It's just, can you make it as suspenseful as possible? Like, instead of having this illusion that, oh, I got fired in the face, how about you just shoot Pyro all over the arena so that you could give Reginald that, oh, that crazy flip jump scare? Like, oh, oh fire! <laughs> Flip! Oh, well, even even with that, right? Like he could he could have like jumped like oh. That's know, what I that's so what that. I mean. But he didn't jump. It was just yeah, like the fire, the fire erupted. Like, the fire erupted. It somehow hit him, and then he flew back. But <laughs> I didn't. I mean, the match was. I I I didn't fuck. Again, I, it's another rematch that I I just don't care for. I'm happy that you know Natty and Tamina are getting you know wins now, and they're yeah. doing um. The heart's old move, the heart attack. I mean, yeah. I mean, can't think of anything else creative that you two ladies could do on your own. Fine, but the plagiarism, <laughs> Natty. Right. I get your heart, but you can do your own shit. Right? Now, I, I did be cool, right? Like, did do a heart attack, right? But then have 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 Tamina pick up the girl, right? And then have Natty do the heart attack, and then have Tamina go on the top rope to hit the snooker the snooker splash, and then boom. One, two, three, you got how about I mean this this sounds like concussion city right here. How yeah, about you have how about you have Natty put someone in the sharpshooter and then Tamina could just do the splash on someone taking the sharpshooter, but then she'd have to land on their heads. <laughs> yeah, I, I that, and that, that's concussion. Oh, that's how you end up in the hospital. <laughs> that sounds good, but then again, the concussion part, yeah. yeah. Like but it, it sounds like it. It, that would look nice as well. Like, like either you know, one, honestly. Like you know that, like, like you know how like they they do that that little freeze cut from when someone is about to do uh, take a chair shot to the head. Yeah, like they would do that for that move. Like they show uh, Tamina inches away from landing on someone's head with a splash, and yeah. then <laughs> yeah. all, all you hear is the all you hear is the, and then that's it. You just see them roll up on the. One, two, three, yeah. it's over. And then, and then all you see is the ref like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you see the ref doing the new jack. Do the new jack. Everybody do the new jack. <laughs> all right, let me stop. We're, we're sounding like a bunch of marks right now. Again, uh, a match that I honestly, why did I not need that? And I, a match that I obviously just did not give two shits about I didn't give any sort of shits about this match. Well, I mean, yeah, there was there was oh. hardly any yeah you're right there was hardly any selling. The only person that sold was the one that flips and his yeah, name I, is I, not I, Gordon. I told you bro it's I was watching the highlights right now. I'm up right, right now I'm up to the I'm up to our next one. But yeah I, that's what I was saying bro like they I was looking I was looking at the highlights bro they were just like no like, nah, it was like, oh, get off me, bitch. Like, God, oh. like, she, oh, she, uh. Seamus versus Ricochet in a non title match. 
basically a rematch from Redacted Backlash, night one, pre-show. What happened was uh, supposedly pretty Ricky's back. Oh, so let's talk about Ricochet real quick. That motherfucker's in so much hot water. Why? All right, so WWE put out a tweet. I think it was I, I have the I have the pictures here on my phone. I'm gonna read them to see. WWE put this tweet out on the 17th, which was uh, that Monday. It was hours before Raw even started, and basically they they made a post that said, "Who is the best high flyer in WWE right now?" And Ricochet sticking his finger up his ass wants to go all out on the internet and say. There's literally no one who could do what I do and how I do it. But I'll let y'all discuss with an emoji of a, of a, of a smiley face with glasses on trying to look cool. Thinking like, ah, ah, I said this cool thing on Twitter. It might get me in trouble. And, you know, someone responded to it and all this stuff, you know, saying all this shit. Like, there are other, you know, high flyers that are good, that are better than you. And, and Ricochet, like an idiot with his finger up his ass, kept saying, and none are as good as mine. Are, are you just asking for an ass whooping? Like, I think this is just- He a, wants to be released, bro. Well, yeah, that too. I think he's just want, I think he just wants to be fired because you know what? I think those main event shows are not getting him to the main event spot, let alone on WWE. All right, so- his NXT one was good, but oh, so no. you know, people all people were also saying some stuff, you know, about uh, Io Shirai being the best high flyer and everything, and Ricochet yeah. again being Ricochet because he thinks that he's cool and shit, saying all this stuff. You know, like I'm not saying she's amazing. I'm not. I'm not saying she's not amazing. She's a hundred is, but I could do everything she could do, probably even better. She can't do what I'm capable of. Maybe not even half. You're literally asking yourself to be fired. Yeah, Bob. Like, do you like? Do you want to go? Do you really want to leave the company that badly? To the like, it, oh, like is main bro. event not doing it for you? No, like, come on, you and Ali are main events in main event. Be happy with where you are. I mean, here's the problem: you're the one that signed the contract. You're the one that put yourself in this stupid predicament to begin with. You knew what the consequences were going to be the minute you got to the main roster, but you were like, no, nah, I'm going to stick my finger in my ass and just play along. Look, bro, you brought it upon yourself. Uh, bottom line, WWE didn't make you overrated. You made yourself overrated. And by, ma- by doing this stupid tweet, by trying to make a point, this so-called statement that you were trying to make, it made you look bad. You basically try to make the company look bad. You made everyone in 205 Live and every other high flyer look bad because you basically said, oh, I'm at, I'm Vince McMahon in the XFL and I hate the NFL. I'm Ricochet. I'm the best cruiserweight ever because I do all the I do all the best high flying stunts. Name someone that can do a 630 splash in WWE. Nobody. So what, dude? So the fuck what? Nobody can at this point right now. I think after your match with Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia of all places, nobody gave a fuck about you anymore. Nobody, nobody. And now what? You want to write? You want to write this shit just so you can make a statement? You you try to do a Seth Rollins here and you did it wrong. You did what Leo Rush did, and now you made yourself public enemy number one because of it. I mean, if you're trying to get yourself fired from this company, exactly. I don't know. I, I I don't know if it's ingenious or, or like I don't know if it's smart or stupid. But if, you, if you're trying to get if you're trying to get fired, then it's smart. I mean, if if it is, then yeah. I mean, maybe he should have been in line with all those other releases that happened earlier. Vanessa Bourne, Justin and Duke, uh, uh, the. The referee that the former CZW guy that's a, that was a WWE referee that like had Matt Heat due to controversial stuff. Yeah, Ricochet should have fallen in line with all those guys, but I don't understand how they're still keeping him in this company after that stupid tweet. Hey, I don't know, man. But um, yeah, um, Rambo on in this match. What did you think of it? It was 
Um. So. I, I kind of enjoyed this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm into the thing where you know how Ricochet took his took his clothes. Seamus Seamus feels like a disrespect. You know, I feel like I don't know. It's like I said. It's like what, what we said what we said a few minutes ago. I think Ricochet is trying to get fired right now. I think he just doesn't care. You know, he's doing whatever he wants. Um, but yeah, um, this match, like Ricochet throws all cool and shit, but Seamus really like fucked him up. Like, don't ever touch a man's hat in a man's jacket. You feel me? His trench. You feel me? You don't you don't touch your boys, your you don't touch your Intercot, well, it's Intercot. No, 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 no. You don't touch United your United States yeah. champions. You don't touch your United States champions' um jacket or hat. And even though Ricochet put up a gr- a, a good match, Seamus fucked him up. Got his, I think, yeah, he got he got his hat and his jacket back. And you know, it was a it was a good one. I mean, we can't say this this today. This was a rematch, but it's not like it's not like the storyline has been. That it's not like that storyline's been going on for months or something like that. You know, that's that's literally only their second match. I think. Yeah, I think that's the that's only that's the only second match with this new storyline or whatever it is. Still, if it happened, if it happened on Sunday night and you oh, give yeah. it to it's, us again the next night, it's a rematch and I'm still hating it. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate the match. I didn't like I didn't hate the match. It was okay. It's okay for yeah. what it was. I mean. It does bother me that Ricochet is not in his gear anymore. They just said, fuck it. You're 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 a reject from the Streets of Rage series now. Go have fun. Or who does or who does that remind you of as well? Like, oh no, I can't say that because Moxie was always wearing pants. Dean Ambrose. I was, I, I was gonna say cause even for like John, even for Dean Ambrose in his last his last run, he had the jacket, the you know, the, the jeans, and that's how you come out, but he always came out in jeans, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, he looks like a the uh, looks like a beat him up style character now. It's ridiculous. I mean, I it was a good match, but again, it's just more rematches. I want something different here. You're not giving me what I want. You're just giving me shit that should have happened on that Sunday night. <laughs> what he wants. All right, so we cut backstage to Mace. T-Bar, they're back, and they're back, and they want some, they want something. They want to put their names on the WWE Almighty Open Challenge. And it's like, oh, this is when it starts. No, this is like, this is just basically going to, going towards the main event. No, like, no, this, no, 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 I'm saying this is where it starts, where everybody starts saying that, oh, they're gonna. Yeah, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna put their name into the Open Challenge and all that stuff. It's like, oh, we're going to flip a coin and, you know, we're going to decide which one of us is going to take out Bobby Lashley because he's going to pay his debt and give us WWE championship match and stuff, whatever. Uh, coin flip and, you know, the, the, the Kofi case thing. Well, Kofi won. <laughs> yeah, but it was, this, is a, this is a good promo from these guys. I mean. The fact that we didn't see them for like what two weeks, three weeks, it kind of bothered me. Yeah, but that's the one. That's the one and only time that we ever get to see them. So that's it. It's like they cut a promo and they're gone. That's it. Finito. Yeah, I did my promo. I got my check and I got out my fuckboy gear and face paint and get my check, please. <laughs> I want to go home. That's what they were doing. They just wanted to go home. But they couldn't go home. They couldn't go home because you're going to see them later on. <laughs> so we have Charlotte taking on Asuka in another fucking rematch. Big facts. Ramble on. I didn't get for this match. As you said, it was a rematch. Um, I know at some point during the match, Rhea Ripley comes out. Um, I, I, I like Charlotte's attire. I still like it, even though she wore it at the pay per view. I, I I do like it. It's always good to see Rhea Ripley out, you know, out there scoping out her competition. So you her. like the one hundred and third Dalmatian? Yeah, I know, I know what you did there. I know what you did there. 
my son added the three the one oh third because her she's the she's the she's the one she's number one oh three. But that's but Corona yeah. the Bills dog. I mean technically. Yeah. I mean the the it the match was it was good. <coughs> I mean, they need to stop already. Is that a <coughs> go does something else or like just stop just stop this this rivalry already? Just just stop. That's it. Let like start with let let Oscar go somewhere else. Finish this right with Real Ripley with, uh, with Charlotte, and that's it. Just move, move on. Let's just move on. Yeah, this is another one that I just I didn't have a care in the world for. I mean, it was a good match between these two. I mean, these two can never like give us a bad match, but yeah. when you give us the same people over and over again constantly, it's just it gets annoying and it gets boring. Uh, Asuka wins when um, Charlotte was about to go for her figure eight. Uh, Asuka goes for the cradle pin. One, two, three. Game over. She wins. Uh, You know, it's just... Again, like, we got to move on, man. We really need to move on because this is getting annoying. Like, Charlotte and Asuka are getting annoying. Ripley... And Charlotte are getting annoying. Ripley and Asuka are getting annoying. It's like, we need these women to do new things. Do new things with them. Please. Because at this point right now, you just, you literally, your backs are against the wall here. If you can't think of nothing, this, this fucking creative, you can't think of anything this creative to do for this show, especially for your women. What the hell? Backstage we go. John Morrison is getting interviewed by Kevin Patrick. Talks about what happened on Sunday with The Miz, you know, being eaten by zombies. Miz is injured. That's a time. knee injury. And he'll be out for five to seven months. Damn. His very first injury in the WWE. Maybe it's not that serious. Maybe maybe it's not that serious because maybe he's shooting the movie. Well, they didn't say anything about a movie because they kept they they literally kept bringing this up that he's like legit injured, and it's not even like a kayfabe injury like how oh I got eaten by zombies and I'm dead I'm never coming back like no he literally got injured in that match and I like it's like oh crap this is really happening. <coughs> so he gets interviewed. And he's like, this match I'm going to dedicate to The Miz when I beat Damian Priest. Oh, my God, we're having this match again! <laughs> this time in a regular Lumberjack match. A regular no fucking zombies, Lumberjack. No zombies. Just a no. regular fucking Lumberjack. Remember how I said we were going to see T-Bar and Mace later? They're yes, here. Uh, They're they fucking play. here. And, and shows Nikki Cross as well. Yes, Nikki Cross actually appeared too. Holy shit. And Nikki Cross, the 24-7 champion, Tazawa was there. The Viking Raiders, Cedric. Cedric popped off with um with Shelton a little bit. Yo, know, so it was it, it was crazy, man, honestly. But I didn't this match I didn't care for. Like I, I didn't care for this match, but it was good to see, you know, the, the um, certain people. Mansoor was there, Titus, the uh, Lucha House Party, you know, Mace T Bar, uh, Kira, well, it's Nikki Cross, the Viking Raiders. Um, yeah, so it, it was. Oh, oh, and Mustafa was there as well. I see, I've just seen him right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it was, uh, you know, it was good to see those people. Honestly, I want this fucking thing to stop already. Damon Priest does not need to be going nowhere near Morrison and nowhere near Miz anymore for a while. Like, let's go. Can we move the fuck on already? It's like, can we stop? Can we fucking stop? Please stop. Please stop. It's time to stop. It's fucking time to stop. This is getting annoying. We've been doing this since January. Why is it so hard for you to give Damon Priest something else to do? Why is it that we still have to feed him to Morrison every week and the Miz every Like, let's move on already. Move the fuck on, WWE. Stop treating Damian Priest like your ex-girlfriend. It's time to move the fuck on. 
Now we can talk about this stupid chicken or stupid fucking promo. Wasting my fucking time. Your favorite segment of all Mondays. Evolution. <laughs> She's she here for you. She doesn't deserve promo time. She doesn't even deserve a package. She doesn't deserve to be back in this company. She doesn't even deserve to fucking... Uh, She's here for you, Hazel. She's here for you to no, see. No, she's not. She's not here for me. She's not here for me because every time she appears on my TV, I will turn it the fuck off. <laughs> I will have a reason to not review this show every week. Trust me. I'm not wasting. I'm not going to sit. Even when she debuts, I'm not going to give her any fucking time of day, any sort of critique. She doesn't deserve it. She doesn't even deserve any of this. Oh, look at me. I got purple hair. No, look, I got pink lemonade hair. Oh, look, I look high in this fucking skimpy outfit. Oh, I was in movies. Why are you not training in the ring? Why are you not taking bumps? Why are you not showing stuff? Why are you not showing us that kind of stuff? Oh, you got you gotta show us your diva lifestyle. I thought this was women's wrestling, not the divas revolution. That's true. You're right. Last time I checked, the butterfly belt died. And right now you're basically that butterfly belt. Who's just resurrected in human form? You're an animorph. Now we got the main event. The main event of the evening. And it's probably the most original thing that they've ever done on Monday Night Raw. So Bobby Lashley comes out and he's about to have his open challenge. And of all people, out of everyone that put their names out there, even Damian Priest put his name out there. For, for the open challenge, too. I forgot about that shit. Yeah. Out of all the fucking people, Kofi Kingston comes out the and accepts the-, the open challenge. But before the open challenge takes place, MVP's talking all this shit about how Kofi Kingston doesn't even deserve or even des- like deserve to be WWE champion, let alone the right to even fight the almighty for the WWE championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a new segment called, you know what grind six is gears. It's so basically, we're going to get, we're going to let the angel of death and our Rambo mania tag team champion six XL. We're going to give him 30 seconds of this, of this time for him to say what he had to say about MVP and Kofi Kingston here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you. You know what grinds Six's gears. Take it away, Six. All right, let me holler at you right quick. You know what really grinds my gears? So, all of a sudden, MVP, Kofi's not worthy? Kofi's not worthy of being champion. Kofi's not. Like, if you wasn't crying with all of us at Jack Dempsey, you fucking bum. You piece of shit. Fuck out of here with that nonsense. Like, they didn't show the fucking footage the next day. We seen it, nigga. We seen it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what grinds Six's gears. Thanks, Six. I really appreciate you stopping by the show. Thank All you, right, man. so, match takes place. Yep. Ramble on. Uh, yeah, so this was this was definitely a good one. Um, For the first time ever, because they, they never fought. They, they, never- they wrestled each other in tag team action, but this is actually the very first time in WWE that they wrestled one-on-one. So it's sort of a dream match, but first time's everything, right? <laughs> Especially if it's not a fucking rematch. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, so nah, the ma- I enjoyed the match. The match was really, it was good. Man, because uh, you get the, you get, you get something here. You get, you get the, the big strong guy, and I would I would say that um, Kofi is the underdog, which we yeah, he is, but we all know that he can get the job done. So first thing we need to mention, even before the match, you know, everybody was think people was thinking that oh for WWE Championship WWE champ, no, it was oh, yeah. not, it was not for the WWE Championship. So you know, there goes there goes MVP with the you know with the mind games, you know. And of course, if your name is Kofi Kingston, you're gonna get screwed out of any single scenario that they put you in, especially if it is for the WWE Championship. So you got and, screwed out of that shit. <laughs> and I and I and I got I gotta be honest here. It was a smart move, cause your boy, Kofi Kingston, 
He won, but he won pick four from a distraction from Drew. Drew yeah, Drew who came by the distraction on, you know, oh, no, no, no. Actually, you know what it was? It was MVP was gonna hit. Um, he was gonna hit. He was gonna hit. Yeah, with the cane. Drew grabs the cane and basically he's gonna almost hit Bobby with it, but then uh Kofi Kingston sneaks up with a roll-up pin, the most devastating move in pro wrestling history. One, two, three, and the crowd goes quiet. Well, there wasn't any fucking crowd there to begin with because it was just virtual TVs all over the world watching. And Kofi Kingston just pinned the WWE champion. And it just got what the fuck? Do you feel I, as I, if this this kind of made Lashley look kind of dumb in this scenario? Hmm? Do you feel as if Lashley looked kind of dumb to this whole thing? Uh, I mean, the fact that he had to he had to lose with a fucking roll up of all things. Like, why would they do that? Yeah, with a roll up, I, I agree. Having As, him lose, having him lose, I hell, he 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 could lose at, at, you know a, a few of them, but but honestly, like him losing to a a, a, a roll up is. He should have lost to at least a finisher, at least. Or Especially to Kofi, because it doesn't look believable. Really like, doesn't. He's a big guy getting rolled up by a little guy where he could just kick out and, t- like, his legs alone could push Kofi so far. Mm. Well, I mean, that's basically what happens on Raw. So now uh, I don't know what's going to happen next week. Maybe we might get Kofi versus Lashley next week for the title. Who knows? Mm. What was your overall thoughts and your final grade? <coughs> show was bad. The show, show was bad. I mean, the match, the matches, <laughs> the match was good. Like when they wrestle, it was decent. But we, like, like we constantly said throughout this show, we're getting nothing but rematches and rematches that we're actually tired of seeing. Man, give us something new. Please just give us, and y'all did that. Yeah, yeah, did that with the main event. Y'all gave us something new. But now let's let's come on, let's let's start with maybe something new in the beginning of the show, you know. And then if you want to throw maybe two or three rematches, or maybe just two, let's leave that two, or maybe even one or none, you know. But honestly, they they gotta do better, man. Because if they keep on, man. You're gonna get you, you're gonna lose you're gonna lose fans, man. You are gonna lose fans, and it just they just need to do better, man. Um I'll give it a a low 3.5. Um that like yeah, that's yeah, a, a low, a low two point five. This show basically was just again. This was redacted back last night to it. So this one actually had rematches and shit. It's just rematches like we're just nonstop here, and that was the problem. Like we've seen these matches already. Give us something fresh. Give us something new. Yeah, you gave us Ricochet and. Uh, Seamus a second time. It's still a rematch. Yeah, you gave us Garza and Gulak a second time. It's still a rematch. The only original thing that you did was Kofi Kingston versus Bobby Lashley. Like, we really had to have Kofi Kingston do double duty here. I would have been fine with anyone else. I mean, and, and not blaming Kofi. I just would have been fine with, with who else could have stepped up. Yeah, and It could have been anyone from the Viking Raiders. And again, it could have been Matt Riddle. could have been Orton. Could have been anyone, anyone. I'm not saying Kofi doesn't have a, a shot here. There's a possibility that they, they could do that again. They could yeah. shock us with that again, but I don't know if it's going to happen. But now it's just we, we got to see where we go forward next week. So this week's was just – this was – it was just why. It was bad. It was just we can't, we got every – it's basically you gave us everything that we were supposed to have on Sunday. You gave us everything that we were supposed to have on that pay-per-view. You could have just done that. Could have just switched it around. Like, here, take take this card from Raw, put it on this pay-per-view. Take this pay-per-view's card, put it on Raw. Would have been fine. 
would have been perfectly fine. Nobody would have complained. That Raw would have been probably better. The pay per view might have might have been sucked or poopy and shit, but at least <laughs> it lived up to its name. Backlash, because backlash is all about fucking rematches and all that shit, right? Yeah. Fucking do it. Do it, just do it, bro. Do it, do it, and it's doing it well. Oh. Segments were okay. Women's division still needs help. Tag division still needs some work. Um, please, please. After this whole shit, we cannot go back to Lashley and Drew. We cannot go back to Lashley and Braun. Braun needs fresh faces to compete against, and we need to keep that going within. I don't know. If it has to be Kofi, fine. It's better than Braun or Drew because, let's face it right now, Drew is, is looking like he's getting the Roman and Cena push if they keep putting him in this championship picture over and over and over. Like, don't push him too quick. Let him lose and then give him the t- give him a break from the title and then when the time is right, you can put him back in there. I much agreed, my friend. But for now, the show just gets a 2.5. It's a high bad, but you got to stop with the rematches. You got to stop with the rematches. Okay. I can I, I, I can understand. I can understand why. It's fun for what it is, but it's like it, it's just it's just annoying right now. All right, let's let's bring it home here. Follow us here, youtube.com forward slash Rainbow Mania Show. You Woo. could stomp a mud hole on that subscribe button. Cheer for us by giving us a thumbs up, liking Back. our videos every week because we put out content every week for a year Woo. as far as our social media is concerned. Instagram at Rainbow Mania Show. Twitter at Rainbow Mania. Facebook.com forward slash Rainbow Mania Show. For our audio stuff, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anchor, Google Podcasts everywhere. Jay, let them know where to follow you at. You guys can follow me at on IG at Savage 2 A's PWPC. Savage with 2 A's PWPC. You can find me on Instagram at iZombies. Double I Z O M B double I E S Z. We'll see you guys for what smack down for Jay Savage. I'm Heels of the Eye Zombie. We are Twin Magic. We would like to wish you all a point in goodies. Wow. A two sweet. And a good bye, good night. Bye bye. 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 Bye.